and welcome to this video. In this video, I am going to cover the EC2 instance hibernation. Ideally, when you hibernate an EC2 instance, it ultimately results in a stop state. So what is the difference between stopping an instance versus hibernating an instance? First, let's try to understand the basic difference between stop and hibernate. Imagine you have a computer at home and you have a bunch of applications open in it like VS Code, browser, terminal and so on. In this scenario, stopping the computer means turning it off completely and when you do this, all your applications are closed. For example, you turn off the computer before going to bed and in the morning you turn it on again and it starts fresh. So you have to open all your applications and tools again. In general, when you stop and start the computer, you cannot resume the work from where you left off before going to bed. Now, instead of stopping the computer, if you hibernate your computer, then it is like you are putting the computer into sleep mode. So when you hibernate your computer, it saves exactly what you are working on, like which applications are open and it's stayed to your hard drive and then it goes to sleep. So when you wake the computer up by pressing any key or click, you do not have to start fresh and you can resume the work from the state before hibernation. For example, you are working on something and you want to take a break, so you put the computer in sleep mode and when you come back, you press the key and your computer wakes up instantly with all your work still there just as you left it. So in AWS EC2 instance terms, Stopping an EC2 instance means you turn it off and when you start it again, it's like a fresh start and it does not remember what it was doing before. Whereas, hibernating an EC2 instance means saving the current state of work first and then turning it off and when you start it again, it continues from where it left off. So this is the quick difference between stop and hibernate. Now as a next step, let's try to understand what happens when you stop an EC2 instance at high level. So let's start with what all things the running instance has. The running instance has RAM, instance store volume which is the temporary storage, EBS volume, private IPv4 and IPv6 addresses, public IPv4 address and elastic IP address if it is attached to that particular instance. Now when you stop and restart the instance, existing private IPv4 and IPv6 address EBS volume and data within it and elastic IP address is preserved if applicable. But the public IPv4 address and data stored in RAM and instance store volume are lost. Now since the data stored in RAM is not preserved, you cannot resume the work from the same state it was in when you need it again after starting the instance from the stopping state. So in this case, you need to start fresh. Now let's see what happens when you hibernate an EC2 instance. In general, hibernation is similar to stopping an instance and the end state of the instance results in a stop state. But while you hibernate, one additional step occurs which is saving the content of the RAM to EBS root volume before shutting down the instance. And now, when you start the instance from the hibernation state, the saved content of RAM in EBS volume will be loaded back to the RAM and then the instance state will change to running state. This means you can resume your work from the point before hibernating the instance. So you do not have to start fresh in case you are starting the instance from the hibernation stop state. In terms of what information EC2 instance persists and loses when it is hibernated is similar to what we saw in the previous slide except for the additional piece which is saving the content of RAM to the EBS root volume when it is hibernated and loading it back to the RAM from EBS root volume when instance is started. So this is the high level difference between what you get when you stop an instance versus uh, what benefit you get when you hibernate an instance. But here we have a problem. The problem is that you cannot just hibernate any instance. So there are certain hibernation prerequisite and limitation that you need to keep in mind. So let's have a look at the prerequisites. Not all AMIs support hibernation and I would recommend checking the link in the description for up to date list of AMIs that support hibernation. Not all instance types support hibernation and here is the list of instance type that support hibernation 
as of today which includes instances from M series, T series, C series, R series and I series. Hibernation is not supported for bare metal instances and you cannot enable hibernation for any instance which have a RAM size of more than 150 GB. EBS volume should be attached to an EC2 instance and should be encrypted and the EBS volume should be large enough to store the content of the RAM. You cannot enable hibernation after launching an instance and it should be enabled at launch. Now let's talk about few of the limitations. While the instance is hibernated, the instance store volume data is lost. You cannot hibernate the instance with a RAM size greater than 150 GB. You are restricted and cannot change the instance type or size when hibernation is enabled. Instance cannot be in a continuous hibernation state for more than 60 days. You have to at least start and hibernate the instance once to reset that cycle. You cannot hibernate an instance configured to boot in UEFI mode. Connecting to the instance using the AMI which is created from the hibernated instance might result in failure. If you have the hibernation enabled and for some reason hibernation does not succeed then normal shutdown of the instance occurs. And in this state you cannot resume the work from where you left off. From a performance perspective, the time to hibernate or resume the instance is dependent on the memory size of the instance, the amount of in-memory data to be saved and the throughput of the root EBS volume. So here I would recommend you to refer to the official documentation for up-to-date hibernation prerequisites and limitations. So till now we discussed enough about hibernation, but where can we use hibernation? What are the use cases? Let's have a look at that. Long initialization processes. So some applications have lengthy initialization processes that needs to be performed every time the instance starts. In such a scenario, hibernation is beneficial for such applications because it allows you to quickly resume the instance with all the initialization already completed, which saves time and resources. Development and QA environments. Developers often have specialized development and testing environments set up on EC2 instances. Hibernation allows developers to pause these environments with all the tools and data loaded, which makes it convenient to continue work later. Quick disaster recovery. Hibernation can serve as a part of a disaster recovery strategy. By hibernating instances with critical workloads and data, you can quickly recover from a failure or outage, minimizing downtime and data loss. Another one is batch processing. In scenarios where you run batch processing jobs on an EC2 instance, hibernation can be beneficial. You can hibernate the instance between job runs, ensuring that the job's progress and results are retained and the instance is ready for the next batch job. So these are a few of the use cases where you can leverage hibernation. Now let's talk about pricing. So pricing is pretty straightforward. You will only pay for the EBS storage attached to it and elastic IP address if applicable. You will not be charged for instance usage for a hibernated instance when it is in stop state. So that's about pricing. Now it's time for a quick hands on. So as a part of the hands-on, we will launch an EC2 instance with hibernation enabled beforehand because you cannot enable hibernation after launching an instance. And then we will run the Nginx server using the Docker image to test the hibernation functionality. So let's jump to the AWS Management Console. Once you are within AWS Management Console, navigate to EC2 Management Console and click on Launch Instance. Now here we are going to configure a couple of things, provide the name, I will say test-hibernation. Within AMI, I am going to select Ubuntu 22.04, which supports hibernation. Within instance type, I am going to select t2.micro and t2 series also supports hibernation. Within key pair, I am going to select existing key pair that is flask.pem, which I already have on my system. Within network settings, I am going to select existing security group and from the drop down, I will search for Docker, 
Docker Flask. Within this security group, I have whitelisted port 80, port 22, and port 8080. So for the purpose of this demo, please make sure that you have whitelisted port 22 and port 80 as a part of the security group. Post security group configuration, navigate to advanced details and look for stop hibernate behavior and enable it. And one more thing that we have to configure is to enable the encryption of the root volume. So here within configure storage, you need to click on advanced. You need to expand this and select encrypt it from the drop down. Now, once you are done with this configuration, click on launch instance. Okay, so here the instance is in pending state. So let's wait uh, for the instance to get started. Now the instance is in running state. So I'm going to copy the public IPv4 address and SSH into that instance. So the command is SSH hyphen I hyphen I stands for identity file followed by the identity file name. So in my case, it's flask.pem followed by the username of the operating system. So we have the default username that is Ubuntu at the rate public IPv4 address and then press enter. Yes. And now as you can see, we have successfully logged in into the instance. So let's quickly run a command that is sudo apt hyphen get update. Now as a next step, we are going to install Docker. So the command is sudo apt hyphen get install docker.io. Now here we have successfully installed the Docker. To check, you can simply run sudo docker. And as you can see, the Docker is installed successfully. Now as a next step, we are going to run the Nginx application with the help of Docker. I am going to use this repository that is Einsteinish Docker Nginx Hello World. And using the given command, I will run this simple Nginx server on EC2 instance and we should be able to see the web page similar to the given screenshot. So I'm going to copy this command, navigate to terminal and I'm going to paste it over here. And I need to add sudo in front of it. And I will replace 8080 as a host port with 80 as a host port. And then I will press enter. So this command pulled the image from the Docker Hub and it's running the image in the container. So if I do sudo docker ps, then we should be able to see the running containers. Now to test this, Navigate to EC2 Management Console, copy the public IPv4 address, open a new tab, paste it and press enter. And as you can see, we have the Nginx server running which is displaying some information like server address, server name, date and the URI. Now for example, if I kill this container, sudo docker kill container ID and then if I try to reload this, then it will not work. Okay, so let me rerun this again. And now if I reload again, then it should work. Now what we are going to do is we are going to stop this instance first and then we are going to start it again to check how it behaves. I'm going to exit from this console from this EC2 instance. So I have closed the SSH connection and now I'm going to stop this instance and then I'm going to start it again. So now the instance is in stop state. Now let's start this instance again. So click on instance state, click on start instance. As soon as the instance is in running state, we will copy the public IPv4 address and paste it in browser to test if the Nginx server is running or not. So ideally the expectation is that we will get the site cannot be reached because the Nginx server is not running behind the scenes. So now it is in running state, the IPv4 address is changed, that's fine. So let's copy this and let me paste it over here and press enter. So as you can see, it says the site can't be reached because the Nginx Docker container is killed and it has stopped. So let's again SSH into this instance, replace the public IPv4 address with the new one. 
Now, if I do sudo docker ps, then there is no container that is running. So, what we are going to do is we are going to run the nginx container again. So, press enter. If I do sudo docker ps, then it is in running state. And as you can see, we can also load the application using the public IP address. Okay. Now, as a next step, we are going to hibernate this instance instead of stopping the instance. So as you can see, the container is running, the application is up and running, we are able to load it. Okay, so now select that instance, click on instance state and say hibernate instance and then click on hibernate. Ultimately, hibernation results in stop state. But while you choose to hibernate, the content of the RAM is saved to the EBS root volume and then the instance is shut down. And when you start the instance from the hibernated state, it loads the content back into the RAM and then the instance will be in running state. So it is in stop state. If I reload this, it's not going to work. As you can see, it will say the site can't be reached. Now let's start this instance again. So now we are starting this instance from the stop hibernation state and not the stop state. Now again our instance is up and running and it is in running state. So what we are going to do is we are going to simply copy this public IPv4 address and paste it in this browser. And as you can see the Nginx server is up and running. Now if we SSH into this instance and check, so this is hanged. So let me open a new session. So I'll do SSH hyphen I. And now I am into this instance. And if I do sudo docker ps, then I should be able to see the container that is running and this is where it is reflecting. So here when we started the instance from the hibernated state, we did not have to rerun the container unlike starting the instance from stop state. Instead, the container was already running. So with hibernation, one can easily resume the work from the previous state. And this was the quick hands-on about hibernation and this is how you can leverage hibernation for different use cases. So guys, this is all I wanted to cover as a part of this video. Until that time, if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service, then please leave them below and I will try my best to come up with the tutorial as soon as possible. And if you have any queries or comments, then again, please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time.